Hi learners! Welcome to Math is Fun with Sir O. Today, I will be discussing statistics. And now, we're going to discuss the measures of dispersion for grouped data. So let's read first our learning outcomes for this lesson. At the end of this lesson, the learners will be able to compute and interpret the measures of dispersion for the grouped data. So we have here our example. So these are the scores of 40 students in a 60-point quiz. On the first column, we have here the scores. So we have 5 to 10, 11 to 16, 17 to 22, 23 to 28, 29 to 34, 35 to 40, 41 to 46, 47 to 52, and 53 to 58. On the second column, we have the frequency. Let's say on the last row. So we have here two students who got a score which is from 5 to 10. Next, three students who got a score which is 11 to 16. Four students who got the scores, which is 17 to 22, and so on. On the third column, we have our class boundaries. So later on, we're going to determine the range by getting the lowest value and the highest value of the scores. So let's start with 53 to 58. So on the left side, we have here our formula. So that is the range sub 1 minus 0.5, meaning... Our range here, 53, we're going to subtract 0.5. Then on the right side, we have here our range 2. So we have here 58. Then we have to add 0.5. So again, on the left side, we're going to subtract 0.5. On the right side, we're going to add 0.5. So 53 to 58, that would be 52.5 to 58.5. Right? Next. 47 to 52. So 47 minus 0. 0.5, that would be 46.5. Then we have 52 plus 0. 0.5, that would be 52.5. And we're going to do that until we have finished all the rows there. So we have here our highest class boundary, 58.5, and the lowest class boundary, which is 4.5. Now, using the formula for the range, that is equal to highest class boundary minus lowest class boundary. That is equal to 58.5, our highest class boundary, minus 4.5, our lowest class boundary. So, 58.5 minus 4.5, our range is equal to 54. Now, let's go to our solution and get in the variance and standard deviation. So this time, we're going to spread out our table. Here on the first column, we have our scores, the same that we had in our previous sample. Then we have there, on the second column, our frequency, or the number of students who have gotten this specific score. Now, before we proceed, we're going to get first our summation of F, and that is represented by our N. So that is equal to 40, because we have 40 students. So let's go to the third column. So that is class mark represented by your x. So the formula in getting your class mark is the sum of your range sub 1 and range sub 2. Then we're going to divide them by 2. So for example, range sub 1 is 53. Range sub 2 is 58. So we're going to add the two numbers. Then we're going to divide their sum. And that would be 55.5. Now we have also here on the next row, 47 plus 52, then divided by 2, that would be 49.5. And now we're going to do that until we finished on the last row. All right, so we have already here our class marks. Now let's go to our fourth column, and that would be the product of your frequency and your x. That would be f times x. So we have here on the second column, our frequency. On the third column, our class mark, which is represented by our x. So let's multiply on the first row. So 3 times 55.5, then our f times x is equal to 166.5. Second row, we have 4 times 49.5, then our f times x is 
198. Then we're going to do that until we're finished on the last row. Then, of course, we're going to get the summation of the product of your f and x, and that would be equal to 1,212. Now, let's go to our fifth column. So this is the square of your x value and your mean, right? But we don't have here yet our mean. So what are we going to do? So let's use this formula. So bar x is equal to summation of fx all over n. Now we have here already our summation of fx, and that is equal to 1,212. And we have also here our value for n, and that is equal to 40. So we're going to use these values here in our formula. So that would be equal to 1,212 divided by 40. So our mean there is equal to 30.3. Since we have already our mean, we can proceed now with our solution. So we have there the deviation. So that is the difference of your x value and your mean, then we're going to square it, okay? So our x there is here on this column. Then we're going to subtract our mean, which is 30.3. So that would be 55.5 in the first row minus 30.3, okay? After you have gotten the difference, we're going to square our answer. Okay? And that would be equal to 25.2 squared, and it is 635.3. 0.4, right? Then we're going to do it again in our second row. So 49.5 minus 30.3, then the difference we're going to square, and that would be equal to 368.64. So we're going to do that until we finish on the last row, all right? Now let's proceed on this last column. So we're going to multiply our frequency with the square of the deviation. So we have already our fifth column, which is this, the square of the deviation. Then we're going to multiply our frequency. On the second column, we have here our frequency. So three times 635.04. So this time we'll have 1,905.12. Then the next row, four times 368.64, and that is, 1,474.56. Then we're going to do that until we finish on the last row. And then we're going to get the summation of your F times your square of your deviation, and that is equal to 6,274.4. So meaning this is the sum of all our values here in the sixth column. Now let's go to our solutions in getting the variance and standard deviation. So this time, let's simplify our table. So we only need here our column two, this column here for the summation of your fx, and the column for the product of your f and the square of your deviation. So let's recall our formula for the variance. That is, s squared is equal to summation of the product of your f and your square of your deviation all over n minus one. So we have here the value for f times the square of the deviation, and that is equal to 6,274.4, and our n, which is equal to 40. So let's plug in our values in our formula. So that is s squared is equal to 6,274.4 divided by 40 minus one. So meaning 6,274.4 divided by 39, and our S squared is equal to 160.88. So this is our variance. Now let's continue uh, with the standard deviation. So this time we're going to take the square root of this value to get the standard deviation. So that would be the square root of 160.88, and that is equal to 12.68. So that would be our standard deviation. So again, our variance is 160.88 and our standard deviation is 12.68. Thank you so much for listening and watching this video. Please don't forget to like and share this to your friends and your classmates. And if you have questions, 
just go to the comment section below. And I hope you consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Again, it's my pleasure to create and make video on your math lessons to make your learning journey a wholesome and fun activity. By the way, this is your Sir O. Till next time, God bless and keep safe always. Goodbye.